Hello there, kia ora. During the election campaign, there was very little on the ground about the creative sector because, well, to be fair, a large chunk of parties didn't have policies, and three of the parties that are in Parliament now, well, only one of them had a policy regarding arts and culture, and that's a real concern because it was ACT. Now, the ACT party call themselves really liberal, and you can do pretty much whatever you want because they're all about freedom of choice. You can buy as many semi-automatic weapons as you want, even if you've turned around and said you want to go in and blow up mosques. But you can't smoke weed, and you certainly can't send your kids to school with cell phones in case you need them. You can't even build like three-story houses in Epson as far as they're concerned. Because the ACT party is really good at saying we're all about freedom of choice, but only the choices that we give you which is kind of problematic when it comes to things like the creative sector. They also, for some weird reason, wanted to tie in how much money the creative sector got to philanthropy, basically how much rich people were willing to pay for art, and that's always worked out really well, hasn't it? Anyway, during the last couple of months, there was a bit of an upset in the ACT Party because poet Tusiata Avia wrote a poem about colonisation that got funding from Creative NZ. Well, over the last couple of days, she's won an award for that, which came with a cash prize, which has, again, upset those fragile snowflakes in the ACT Party. They have they have not responded well. ACT Party member Todd Stevenson, or MP for Arts and Culture, the spokesperson for it, he was really unimpressed. He called that race-baiting. Not like this isn't race-baiting, but it's okay because David Seymour said it, so it doesn't really count, apparently. But things are really strange here, because he's considering this a racist rant and giving the prize to her is sick. But he also threatened Creative NZ's funding. And here's a real problem. See, Creative NZ is a crown entity. It has to report back to the minister. It's not like TVNZ, where the minister is removed by law from being able to influence what it is that they do. Creative NZ has to report to the government and meet the criteria that the government puts in place. And with ACT, being the only one of those parties that actually had a culture, arts, and heritage policy. Well, that's a real concern because it's most likely that they're going to be the ones that lead any kind of changes there. But to threaten the funding is really concerning. You see, Creative NZ had static funding for almost a decade, and then under Jacinda, they saw some increases come up. And that's really not a bad thing, because when your population is growing and your funding stays the same, your funding obviously doesn't go anywhere near as much. But the majority of funding for Creative NZ actually comes from Lotto NZ. Their funding is based on how many Lotto ticket and scratchies get sold, and there's a lot of organisations out there that are in the same boat. But one of the things that's really fascinating, though, is that over the last year, 2019 to 2022, it was given $47 million from Lotto NZ while only getting about $16 million from the government. So overall, they've got an operational budget of about $60 million, which makes up $6 billion in New Zealand's GDP. That's a hell of an investment. But that investment, as well as the effect it has on our economy, that's under threat from a bunch of really fragile middle-aged white guys who feel that it's okay for you to go out and buy as many semi-automatic weapons as you want and joke about blowing up the Ministry of Pacific Peoples, but you're not allowed to write a poem about someone who's been dead for 250 years.